John, I recently read an article that you co-signed with Dr. Paul Connett and others titled Citizens Are Being Misled, published in the Sunraysia Daily Newspaper in Victoria. You have a lot of letters after your name, including a Master's of Science degree. You're also a medical doctor. Can you please provide an overview of yourself, including your background and general involvement in the water fluoridation issue? Well, <clears throat> people often ask me how I got involved, and I have to sort of tongue-in-cheek tongue tell them that I've never been in favour of poisoning people. And um, I get all sorts of reactions from that. But basically, when you're taught to be a doctor, you're taught to at least do no harm. And that is at the background, coupled with an evolving interest due to my father's influence and studying nutrition and getting involved in more natural remedies. Um, that's got stronger. Um, however, I, I have all the orthodox qualifications in general practice and children's health and nutrition. But uh, I've been the um, Queensland Chair of the Australian College of Nutritional and Environmental Medicine and the Australian Integrative Medical Association. Um, and as I mentioned before, uh, for six years I was uh, a member of the Complementary Medicine Evaluation Committee of the Therapeutic Good Administration. So um, that's my background and I suppose that's what's driven me. I suppose, touching on what Jeannie just said, it, it is... Uh, uh, I suppose one thing that TGA experience taught you is to, to, to evaluate research. And when, when the, the um, National Research Committee in the, United, in the United States in 2006 has 5, study, 500 studies and 1,000 references indicating there are difficulties with uh, teeth fluorosis, with skeletal problems, with thyroid function, with brain function, osteogenic sarcoma, and a situation led by dentists who are primarily interested in teeth and not the rest of the body, or public servants who seem to be driven by a political and not a medical agenda, uh, uh, quite happily brush that aside. And, and it's quite astounding uh, that that has been allowed to get through the system. In 2007, over 20 medical doctors in the Victorian town of Warrnambool co-authored a letter to Victoria's Chief Officer, Dr John Carney, warning him and his department not to fluoridate Warrnambool, Geelong and Ballarat due to health concerns. I might add that this also has been carried out in Queensland in the battle to stop fluoridation in Queensland. These health professionals were ignored and these areas were forcibly fluoridated soon after, including Queensland. Why are health professionals being ignored on this issue and what hope do ordinary citizens have if even <coughs> their own doctors are ignored? One of the very false arguments that is used by the authorities, uh, driven by the politicians, or you wonder who's driven, driven who because I think the public service in the background take a view and nurture each side of politics. And I think the big problem we've had in Queensland and other places is that there's uh, both sides of, of, the, of the parliament to uh, support fluoride. But arguing from authority that, that everyone thinks this is, is, is quite ludicrous. If you look around the world, 17 health, the health departments of 17 countries in co continental Europe have rejected fluoride. China, Japan, India, uh, Northern Ireland, Scotland have rejected fluoride. In fact, if you look at it, only 5% of the world's population is fluoridated and 50% of that is in North America. And there's only eight countries that in, the country, in the world who fluoridate most of their water. Two of those, um, uh, Israel, have decided not to expand it because of health concerns. And in the last present election, the 4th of November 2008, uh, some 70 communities in the USA decided they did not want their water fluoridated. So it is really a false argument to authority that they have the strength. And something's happened in this country. If you look at where it's happened, it's a, 
it's tied up with North America and Australia, and there's only those few other countries, um, and we have not been blessed. So what hope have ordinary citizens got of overturning fluidation when the health authorities obviously are forcing this through, whether we like it or not? I think there, I think 20 or 30 percent of people think about it and feel strongly about it, and, and I think it's you don't turn elections on it, but in, in this state of Queensland, people have made a judgment about the Bly government that she didn't really listen to what we wanted there, and they're extrapolating from that, and it's it's contributed to her her you know unfavourable situation. But the um, I think there's a lot of subtle things. Uh, if if you're a child who's been told to have your fluoride tablets and for your naught till you're 20 and then you reach adult life, it's, it's in, there's a bit of a thing imprinted on your brain that fluoride is good for you and no one's ever told you it's bad for you. So we're, we're, that's a problem and to change that mindset is difficult. So that's made it easier for them but um, um, I think you can only do what we're doing now and well, print, uh, well, just keep on talking about it. What would you say to other health professionals, just as an aside here, would you ask other health professionals to have the courage to stand up and speak out on this issue and do, do some research and then actually stand up courageously and say, no, this is wrong? But, uh, if you look at this, the mindset of doctors, who I talk to a lot about this, is that uh, they are brought up uh, in a system where they treat symptoms with drugs and they say they are convinced because of various systems they're exposed to that it is good. Uh, there's no research that is worthy of research in this country that to, to look at the side effects so they say well there's no evidence but the research hasn't been done. Uh, and they're happy to go with uh, that mindset uh, that um, they're treating. Uh, and, and, and it satisfies their thing about doing preventive medicine. It, it's an attractive little thing to be appearing to be something, something, doing something preventive. And they often turn on me and say, look, you're into preventive medicine. I thought you'd take this by the scruff of the neck. Whereupon I have to tell them I'm against poisoning. Hmm. I noticed um that you've actually got some paperwork there. Perhaps you'd like to share with the audience. I know that you've got something you'd like to say, so perhaps you'd like to <laughs> share that with the audience. Uh, well, before the legend, uh, Premier Bly did something that other states have not done. Uh, most of it's been considered shire by shire, uh, or local authority by local authority, and um, uh, she, she undertook to introduce it across the state and uh, I led a deputation, three or four other colleagues, to, to put to her why she might consider that's not a wise point of view. But I can get tell you, the end of the story was having given her this document and uh, research about that thick, she went straight into the parliament and had the bill read. So having listened to us for 40 minutes, uh, it was not a, not not a true listening and she had no intention. But I, I addressed three questions at that time. Uh, the efficacy issues and pointed out, look, it's been in Tasmania 30 years and the, flu and the incidence of dental caries is worse uh, there than in Queensland. Uh, the Gold Coast where there's no fluoride is much better than Townsville. Um, uh, and the affluent areas of Brisbane are much better than Townsville, and it's probably a socio, where there are differences, it's socio-economic. Uh, and the, the second thing that's brought up over and over again is that they make a huge issue about the dose, the 0.9 parts per million, sorry, about the concentration. And it's like giving someone a bottle of medicine and saying, look, it's only a small concentration, have as much as you like. So this, uh, out of the Scientific American, and the month before we met her, we said, look, the Scientific American is saying there's huge, there's an enormous amount our, in our environment now. There's people, there's labourers and sports people who have many times. Uh, the, the, the risk, the pathology, the toxicology uh, comes in at the, from 0.7 to 2.3 parts per million. 
So if you're taking 0.9 parts per million, if people have two or three times, they're, they're an enormous risk and there are a lot of them. Uh, there's certain f uh, teas and wines and soft drinks and juices and raisins, potatoes and cheese and grapes, foods which concentrate this and have done so in America. So it's in the environment so much, uh, they need to have a look at what people are getting. And then you have the issue of people who can't excrete it. And then, as well, we said at the end, um, this is enormous problem of the hypersensitive people. There's a lot written about uh, at the end of the spectrum, there are seven or eight or nine or ten percent of people, well, it's going to be one percent of people allergic to fluoride. So in this state, there'll be 42,000 people allergic to fluoride getting no medical help whatsoever because the doctors and dentists don't believe in it. Who's going to tell them? So if their rash gets better or they're worse or their migraine gets worse or their gut symptoms get worse, who's going to tell them? And, um, and it's often the more vulnerable and sick people.